Hello, fellow Movie Crusaders, and welcome to another episode of Sean's Movie Crusades. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're going to be reviewing the latest movie that was supposed to be released in theaters, but is now on video on demand, The King of Staten Island. Uh, now, for me, most people will know Pete Davidson um, from Saturday Night Live. He's usually the tall, lanky, stoner guy who kind of just comes on and rambles on for pretty much every sketch that he's in. But he's got that kind of charm that makes you want to listen to him and actually enjoy when he's on screen. And this is Pete Davidson's really first real big go of it um, as, as a uh, star of a movie. And this movie is a kind of a semi-autobiography of, of his life, kind of like how 8 Mile was to Eminem. Um, basically, the uh, general plot of The King of the Staten Island is Scott, played by Pete Davidson, has been uh, has an, is in a case of arrested development since his firefighter dad has died. Um, he spends his days smoking weed and dreaming of being a tattoo artist until the events until events force him to grapple with his grief and take first steps towards his life. AKA his mom starts to date a new man who's also a firefighter. Um, so he's directed by Judd Apatow. Now, uh, Judd Apatow, he's uh generally well liked as a director um but he does do some things that kind of rub people the wrong way Judd Apatow did direct one of my favorite comedies of all time the 40 year old virgin um but I do agree that one thing that Judd Apatow tends to do uh with most of his movies is he tends to make them go a little too long um all of his movies uh like these tend to go way past the two hour mark usually between the two hour two hour and 30 minute range when a lot of the film probably could have been cut down about a half hour so they tend to overstay their welcome. Um, but one thing that Judd Apatow is really great at is he does a real good job of developing characters, making you care about these characters, wanting to see good things happen with the characters throughout the film, and not just the main character, but the cast around him. That was one of the main things I loved about 40-Year-Old Virgin is you had a very lovable character in Steve Carell, and you wanted him to fall in love and finally get laid. Uh, but you also loved the cast around him, Seth Rogen, Paul Rudd, uh, Romy, uh, Mal Malco, Malkney. I'm, I'm, I'm butchering his name. I, I apologize, but everyone knows what I'm talking about. Uh, all those characters in that film, uh, really stood out and became kind of main characters in their own right. And that's why I love that film the way it is. I haven't really had a Judd Apatow movie since 40 year old virgin really grabbed me as much, uh, since that film. I mean, he's put out good movies since then, but nothing that's really made me go back to going, ah, oh, this is like 40 year old virgin. Um, but the King of Staten Island, no, it's, it's not going to do that. <laughs> I, I wasn't building you up to think it's going to be like 40 year old virgin. It is kind of its own little thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, it's a semi autobiography of Pete Davidson who had lost his father in real life, uh, during the events of nine 11. Um, in this movie, he plays Scott, his father died in a hotel fire. Um, and it's kind of been 17 years since his father's died, but he's just kind of really, He's, he, I mean, he says it in the movie, he's a bum. He just hangs around all day, smokes weed with his friends, and just kind of mooches off his mom, played by Marissa Tomei. Uh, but when Marissa Tomei's character, um, what's her actual name in the movie? It's uh, Margie. Um, when Margie meets a man, played by Bill Burr, the comedian, uh, which I was actually really glad that he finally got an actual movie role. Uh, many people might know him from, he was on, if you guys watched The Mandalorian, he had an episode on The Mandalorian, which I thought he was actually really good on that. Uh, but when she starts to date this man who's also a firefighter, kind of Scott's world kind of comes crashing down. And he has a kind of has to realize to either, you know, keep living the life he's living or finally learn to grow up, take care of his stuff and kind of take a hold of his life. And that's kind of what we get here with the King of Staten Island. Now, Pete Davidson, obviously, like I said, this is a semi-autobiographical film for him. So it's not that hard for him to act this out because he lived this for the most part of his life. Um, but Pete Davidson does a really good job in this role. He he definitely makes you like him, but are incredibly frustrated with him at the same time. He's he you you want his character to succeed, but at the same time, you just kind of want to smack him for some of the stuff that he does in the film. But he has a charm, just like he does on SNL, where you really want Scott to succeed, wake up, and kind of put something together with his life and do something that's going to make everyone around him happy. Um, cast around him, like I said, you got Marissa Tomei as his mom, Margie, who I think she does a, a fine job in the film. Bill Burr plays Ray uh, Bishop, who is 
the firefighter Dayton um, Mercer Tomei. Um, and for the first half of the film, Bill Burr kind of is playing this one kind of character. Uh, but then as the movie develops uh, with Judd Apatow, how it always goes with his films, Bill Burr's character, Ray, really develops more into a full character. And you really start to grow and like the Ray character more than what you do in the first half of the film. Uh, one other standout for me, um, uh, Steve Buscemi. He plays uh, Papa. He's one of the firefighters in the film. I think Buscemi, he doesn't have a whole lot of scenes in the movie, but every scene he is in, Buscemi is a highlight of those scenes. He really kind of has a more grounded, serious role in this movie, and I really like the way Buscemi, um, or Buscemi uh, really kind of delivers all of his lines in this film. I think he does a real good job of kind of playing the the knowledgeable father role um, in this film to everybody, uh, not just Pete Davidson, but to Bill Burr and the rest of the firefighters. And I really liked his performance overall. Uh, one person that I actually really enjoyed who I had never seen before is um, Belle, Belle Powley. She plays Kelsey, who's kind of Pete Davidson's like on and off girlfriend, not really girlfriend, but close friend. I, I really liked her in this film. I thought she did a solid job. Every time she was on screen, I actually really enjoyed the scenes that we were getting with her. Um, she's, you know, her character, Kelsey loves Scott, but Scott obviously being the way that he is, isn't really to be in a relationship. Doesn't really know, want to drag anyone down with them. And she wants nothing more than to be with him, but then she needs to kind of figure out what she wants to do with her life. And she's a character who has aspiring goals, who wants to do things, but she can't let go of Scott. And I think Belle did a really good job in this role. I, like I said, I have never seen her in anything prior to this. I hope we get to see more of her because I really liked her performance overall. Um, like I said, going on with, with the rest of the film, it's like a Judd Apatow movie. It is about 30 minutes too long. There's a lot of storylines that kind of go nowhere. There's the sister, the, uh, Scott's sister storyline. I mean, it's just kind of there. Uh, it's just kind of there to kind of put more pressure on Scott and to kind of just have another person kind of talking towards Scott, which we already had enough. We have enough of that going on in the movie. We didn't need a sister role to do that because the sister role really doesn't go anywhere. Um, his friends, uh, I actually liked his group of friends in the film, but they go into a crossroads at one point of the movie and you expect them to go back to that and they just kind of stop. And they're no longer in the movie anymore, which I kind of wasn't a fan of that because where their story stopped, I kind of was intrigued on where that could go and the possibilities that could end up in. And just like a Judd Apatow movie, it has nothing to do with Scott, so it doesn't matter. Um, the the way, the second half of the movie, I will say, is considerably better than the first half of the film because the first half of the movie, which is basically Scott being self-destructive with everyone and everything around him – can get a little tiring after a while. And you kind of have to go through that for about a good hour, hour and a half of the movie. So it kind of weighs on you. But then once we get to a crossroads in Scott's life where Scott needs to kind of learn to take um, accountability for himself and his actions and kind of grow up, that is definitely when the movie starts to take a turn and starts to develop uh, a better character of Scott and everyone around him. And the movie starts to actually become a lot more... Uh, not as like, well, we have fun, a lot more fun and a lot more likable towards Scott and everyone around him. So the movie does get better as it goes on. It does tend to take a little too long to get to that point. Uh, in terms of um, recommendations, uh, like I said, it's, it's video on demand. There's not really any movies in theaters. So if you're looking for a, a uh, comedy slash drama type film with uh, characters who are growing as the movie goes on, I definitely recommend The King of Staten Island. If you're a fan of Pete Davidson and you really want to see Pete Davidson go out on his own and put on a great acting performance, obviously this is going to be a movie for you. If you're a fan of Bill Burr, Marissa Tomei, or even Judd Apatow as a director, you guys will definitely um, enjoy The King of Staten Island. It's not going to be one of those movies you're going to remember out, out of his better films, but it is definitely a solid film, especially for 2020 so far. So going to my review score for The King of Staten Island, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Like I said, I think it does its job very well. Yes, there are some storyline elements that kind of fall flat or end abruptly and never go back to, and it does overstay its welcome by about a half hour, but the story in itself is still enjoyable. It tells a great story from beginning to end of the Scott character, and it opens the door to possibilities to Scott by the end of the film. It doesn't, you know, it's not a full autobiography of Pete Davidson. It's not like the end of the movie he goes to becomes a stand-up artist like he is now in, in real life. But I think it does a good job of kind of showing you 
Pete Davidson's life in a nutshell. Um, obviously, it might it's not a full on adaptation of it, but it kind of gives you a good general idea of Pete Davidson and and what he had to go through in his life. And if you care about that, then you'll enjoy this movie. If you don't care about that, now yeah, it might not be the movie for you. But I hope you guys enjoyed this review. And if you guys did, go and hit that like button. If you guys feel like this review is worth sharing, go and hit that share button. But most importantly, don't forget that subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on Sean's Movie Crusades. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Uh, coming up next, um, like I said, we got a few movies that are that are out on video on demand as well. Currently, you got the the Vast of Night. You've got High Note. Um, I think coming out here in the next couple of days, we got the Kevin Bacon film. Uh, you should have left. Um, that I'm actually kind of really intrigued by. I saw that trailer last week, and it definitely was something that made me want to check it out. I'm also like I said, going to check out Just Mercy. Uh, it's been out since obviously January, but I definitely am going to try to get that watched and reviewed for you. Um, we also got Ghosts of War uh, coming out here soon and 7500, which is the airplane thriller starting Joseph Gordon-Levitt. So we got a lot of movies to kind of go over and review. So be on the lookout on the channel for that. And until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders.